So the next part of this little series of videos on implementing the op amp in the strain gauge in our course is um, based around kind of going over the the first configuration in the op amp. So you can see again from our the rather bad photo of our circuit um, we have two different types of op amps. We have those we have the two of uh, the exact same type in terms of the wiring on the left hand side and then we have another one on the third one is on the right hand side so what we're going to talk about in this video is the the ones on the left hand side so now that we've reminded ourselves of the strain gauge circuit and we've seen the two different types of um, op amp configurations that are in in the strain gauge let's go over the first one it'll allow us to introduce uh, of the probably the most important principle in op amp circuitry. Now what you see here is um, a loop that is going from the non -in or from the inverting pin into uh, out to the to the output pin. This connection is something we call feedback, right? And feedback is what you, making feedback with the circuit is what makes op amp extraordinarily useful. Now if you remember in the comparator circuit we did not have feedback and what happened is if you recall if the voltage on the non-inverting pin was higher than the voltage on the inverting pin then it went to the high rail to the high voltage rail and vice versa if, if the opposite was true. So let's so again we have this idea of feedback So this allows us to talk about the most important principle when we're trying to figure out what's going to happen with this circuit. And that is any that anytime you have feedback, the op amp is going to try to do the following. It is going to try to do whatever it can and respond to the circuit in order to get the voltage on the inverting pin to be the same as the voltage on the non-inverting pin. So what do we think is going to happen here? Well, if I have some input voltage into the non-inverting pin, we just said that the, not, the inverting pin is going to want to try to get an equal voltage. Now what's going to happen is we're going to see that the, we're going to have an output voltage, which, and because of feedback, the output voltage will be the exact same as the voltage at the um, inverting pin what's going to happen is this is eventually going to balance out to the point where our voltage at the inverting pin is the same as our voltage at the um, non-inverting pin and therefore because the voltage here is the same as it is here because we have this wired together it will also be the same the output voltage will also be the same so I'm going to show you this circuit again using the LN324 that we're always using in this class. Remember that the notch at the top is um, where we start counting. And again, we're going to use the first op amp. Over here I have a potentiometer and it gets wired to 6 volts and to ground. And what I'm going to do is you can see that it is hooked up to my meter and I'm going to turn up this we're just going to put some voltage in it. It doesn't really matter. Let's just say 1.31. 1. 1. Okay. So I went ahead and we're going to wire this together um, just because the first time you do feedback sometimes a little, is, is a little tricky. So well, again we have an input voltage that is Vn. It's going into our non-inverting pin. So as we can see on the diagram that's our pin 3. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in pin 3. Notice I've already wired power and ground on the chip. This is to a 6 volt battery supply and then the ground. Now, so we have the three. Now notice that the inverting pin is wired to the same place as the output. Well, what I'm going to do first, here's my output wire. It's just going to go to an LED. And the output wire we saw was in pin 1. So all we need to do Okay, so we have pin 1. So all we need to do at this point is wire, to put a wire that attaches the, not the, <laughs> the inverting pin to the output pin. So what we're going to do is that needs to go, remember the 
the inverting pin is at pin 2 and we need to now wire this to the output pin as well. Okay, so I'm going to give you just a second to kind of look at that and see how that works. Okay, now the LED is not lit, lit up. Not surprising because we only had 1.31 volts in there. So what did we say earlier? We said that the input should be the same, the input voltage should be the same as the output voltage. Well, let's check that now. Remember we had 1.31 volts in there and what do we get out of the pen? Well, we get 1.32. A little bit difference, but nothing terribly, nothing surprising. So as we see, we get the same input volt, the same output voltage as input voltage. If I can get this back. In fact, getting the same output voltage as input voltage means that we are not getting any amplification. So unity, meaning one, unity gain. The voltage is the same as the in, the in, the voltage of the input is the same as the output. Okay, and again, we can. I just want to kind of show you that if we turn this the other way, eventually we can see the LED slowly starting to turn on as it gets enough voltage. So why would we use this if we get no gain? Well, the answer is there's more going on here than what we're talking about in terms of what's happening with an op amp or what an op amp can do. This is acting as a buffer, meaning it is separating our, our input signal from our output signal. And we want to do that for a variety of reasons, particularly with the small signals we're getting with the strain gauge.